Hey, what's up everyone? This is Mr. Honey here with Sports Nutrition and today uh, I'm just kind of filming uh, my own living room because the studio where I normally film is kind of a mess right now. So once uh, this is all over, I'll move back in there. But um, today we got some notes on washing dishes. This is once again part of our kitchen safety and kitchen procedures um, that you guys will be utilizing once we come back to school and working in the lab. So uh, go ahead and get those notes out and we will begin. So washing dishes now with these notes it's going to be very straightforward it's just steps i'm going to read them off maybe explain a little bit uh so that way you guys kind of get the gist of what i'm looking for if you've had miss conte before this may be uh or miss Estes. this is probably going to be easy review for you but let's go ahead and get started so washing dishes so Step one, first thing you want to make sure you do is start with a clean sink and there's a reason that we start with a clean sink. So you want to make sure that your sink is clean and then make sure that when you're putting water into it, you have that clean sink water, the clean soap water that you can utilize. So step two is you want to make sure that you clean the dish drainer, all right? So most of the things in the lab will have a dish drainer and you wanna make sure that that is cleaned before you start using it because if it is dirty and then you know that bacteria and all that grossness gets on the dishes even if they're clean, kind of defeats the purpose of having um, you know clean dishes in the first place. So make sure we clean that dish drainer. So step three, make sure to scrape dishes and pots and pans of food. Now, I know in some cases, you know, some people are like, okay, well, you know, eventually it'll go down the garbage disposal and we can just grind it all up, but we don't really have that in the lab, all right? So you wanna make sure to scrape all the dishes of that food, scrape it off, get it in the trash can, get it in a place where it's not going down the drain and it can clog up. So make sure that um, you're scraping everything off of the dishes that you're using. So step four, plug up the sink. Easy enough, just go ahead and plug it up because we're about to fill it up with water. What kind of water are we gonna use? First off, we're gonna turn on and then begin to run warm water into the sink. You want to use warm water because it's been proven that warm water is a lot better at taking out bacteria than um, cold water. And then also it kind of helps break down any um, the gunk, the grime and stuff that you know you weren't unable to scrape off. So just a little quick tip, just make sure that you read instructions on the dishwashing liquid to see how much to add. You don't want to overly dilute and overly soap up uh, the dishwashing water because you're trying to make sure that you're keeping the good mixture there. So you wanna make sure that you want to read the notifications and use it as intended, just as you would use anything in the lab. So with step six, you have filling the sink one half to two thirds full of warm soapy water. And the reason you want to not fill the entire sink is because once you place the dishes in, that water displacement may you know, cause it to rise up and then we can actually run the risk of a spill and someone might slip and get hurt. Step seven, wash knives first. The reason you want to wash your knives first is because one, you can get those sharp objects out of the way and you know what is put in the sink. Secondly, if you wash everything else and it makes the dish water, water, dish water, murky, then you know if you put knives in there and reach in, you can run the risk of cutting yourself and we obviously don't want that. Step eight is we're gonna add cups and silverware next to the mix and handle those. So then once we handle our wonderful, wonderful cups and silverware, we'll end with plates and then make sure that you thoroughly wash each item with a dishcloth or a scrub pad. Steps 10 and 11 is back to back. So steps 10 and 11, you want to rinse each dish or utensil as you wash it in warm or hot, clean water. So obviously we've washed in the murky soapy water and you know once that's done and we've soaked everything up, now you want to rinse with hot clean water just to make sure that it's got a good nice um, rinse going and then we get all that stuff off of it. And then you want to push those dishes in the dish drainer where they can begin to dry. So as the dishes are sitting in the dish drainer, you are going to use a dish towel to dry your dishes and please do not use napkins, okay? Napkins or for wiping your face, not cleaning dishes. We use dish towels to dry the dishes. 
and you may need to remove water from the dish towel multiple times in order to make sure that the dishes are properly dried. There is no point in even cleaning the dishes if you're just gonna have a bunch of wet dishes that you're gonna put away. You wanna make sure that these dishes are completely dry so that way there's no standing water and bacteria cannot collect. Now, once you're done with all your dishes and you got them all dry, you wanna make sure that you're draining the sink and then once you're done there, step 13, you wanna dry the faucets and the sink out with a dish towel. So this is where you're going through the process, taking that dish towel and actually wiping down the sink and making sure that the sink is just as dry as the dishes that you put away. So once again, be sure to remove all water from the dish towel and then fold it over the sink. And this step is very important because like I said, if you do not remove all that water, the dish towel can get very gross and moldy. And this is something that we want to continue to reuse. And um, you know, we just wanna make sure that we get as much water out of it as possible so it can dry as intended. So we have a couple of tips and warnings here. Wash glassware first before greasy pots and pans. So you wanna make sure that you get all the glassware out of the way and then handle the greasy pots and pans last because you've got a lot of caked on grease, a lot of stuff that's coming in that pot and pan. You want that stuff to be last. Just another side note, you might wanna use rubber gloves when washing dishes because they actually can protect your hands from really hot water. And also that can allow you to use hotter water. And then also, you know, whenever you're rinsing, you don't have to worry about burning yourself. And then another tip that we have is that dishes need to be hand dried with a clean cloth. So, you know, if you've used the same towel multiple times to um, dry dishes, it's probably a better idea to just go ahead and use a clean cloth um, instead of having to use the same thing over and over. So in order to soften your hands while cutting grease, you might wanna try adding a tablespoon of baking soda to your soapy water. It might help a little bit. And another thing, and I will reiterate, do not dump sharp knives into soapy dishwater where they cannot be seen. That is just a hazard waiting to happen. So these are also just some lab rules and procedures that I've added um, just as a reiteration. So just take time to look over these and make sure that you're aware of um, what's expected of you when we do go into the lab. So this is going to conclude our uh, dishwashing PowerPoint. So you can go ahead, submit those notes, and you have a mini quiz on dishwashing available. So go ahead and take that, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.